Hey, what's going on, Internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. This is our first 2018 After Effects tutorial, and it's more of a recreation of an old tutorial that I made over a year ago. And basically, that tutorial was a light stroke animation, which we'll be creating here. But I was using plugins in that tutorial, and in this tutorial, I wanted to do it without any plugins, so you can create it without having to purchase any other third party plugins. So let's go ahead and show you how to do it. It's a really cool effect, and it's really awesome. I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and do it. And first things first, when you have your text in here, you have it typed out, you know what you want. This is the style that you want to go with. With your text layer, right click it and click on create mask from text. All right, and then you're gonna get a solid hero. And if you hit M on your keyboard, you'll bring up all the mask layers here and you see that each letter is a mask. So from here, make sure that the mask layer is selected, go up to effect, generate stroke. And from here, go to paint style and set this to on transparent. So now you should be able to see through the text. Actually, only one letter should be stroked out. So go ahead and click on all mask here at the top. And now we turn off the mask icon, which is right here, the uh, toggle mask and shape visibility. Go ahead and take that off and boom, you have your text, which is now a stroke. And from here, let's go to the beginning of our timeline. Let's add a keyframe for start and set this up to 100%. And you can kind of see how each letter is going to animate on individually here. So click on the stroke sequentially button here and you'll each letter will come on individually like that. So that's pretty cool. Set this to 100%. Go over by maybe three seconds, set it to 0%, and now you should have a nice stroke animation just like this. And that was looking good. So now we want to do the obviously the light leak or whatever you want to call it, the lens flare. And what we want to do is we're going to go up to layer, new, solid. And we can call this one flare one. Go up to effect, generate, and click on lens flare. All right, so from here, I'm going to use the 105 millimeter prime just because I like the style of it. And what we want to do is maybe decrease the flare brightness by a touch here. Nothing really spectacular, but we're going to modify this a little bit later. So what we want to do is toggle switches and modes until you see the blending modes here and set this to screen. Or you can set it to add or light in whatever your preference is. And obviously now we want to animate the flare with the animation of the stroke. So what we need to do is go to layer, new, null object, and we can come here to the outline, hit M on your keyboard where you see all the mask, and what we're going to do for the first letter of your title, you're going to the mask path of that first letter, and you're going to copy the mask path. Then you're going to go to the null object, hit P on your keyboard for position, and paste that mask path data into the position parameter. So now this mask is going to follow uh, the animation. So here's what you need to take note of. So if we take a look here, we scrub through it, you can see that the null object anchor point, which is this uh, anchor point right here, is not following the outline of the stroke animation. So what we need to do is we need to experiment here. So first things first, what, however long that your stroke animation was, the start percentage, obviously ours went to three seconds. You need to bring over the last position keyframe over to three seconds if that's where you did your animation and scroll through this and as you can see we're still not lined up on the stroke so what we can do is select both these keyframes right click them go to keyframe assistance and click on time reverse keyframes now this should be all fine now of course it all depends on what type of animation you did with the stroke effect so if you animated the end percentage you probably wouldn't have to reverse the keyframes so just go ahead and make sure the keyframes are matched up and you might have to reverse them depending on what you did so now what we can do is we can go to the flare layer and we can go to the lens flare effect. Alt click the stopwatch on flare center and we can pick whip the expression here to the position of the null object and we'll click that off. So now our flare is going to follow the stroke animation. So if you want to continue this, you have to duplicate it and put it on the rest of the letters. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But before we do that, I want to modify the lens flare because obviously we only have three different choices. We have the three different presets here and, you know, they can look good. But the thing is, you're going to get all these extra lens flare elements that you may not want to have in this animation. Obviously, you want to keep it controlled and you want to do your thing. So first things first, let's talk about masking it out. So we can grab the pen tool here at the top. And what you're going to want to do is just mask around your letter like this. So you want to make sure that the flare isn't going to, you know, be cut off at any point. So we do this 
scroll through the timeline real fast to make sure that the flare isn't going to be cut off and it looks great and then hit f on your keyboard for feather 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 it out uh to about 100 whatever you need to do and now we have one light in here so let's say you want to change the color of this flare obviously you can't do it with the lens flare effect but make sure the layer is selected go up to effect color correction and add curves and you can go to the red channel, green channel, blue channel, doesn't matter what you want to do, and just kind of mess with the curve here. So we want to make it, you know, maybe a blue, maybe go to green channel, you can bring it more purple, more green. It, you know, obviously there's a lot of control over this, and, and we'll keep it around there. And of course you can hide the null object if the little box is getting annoying, so you can hide it and doesn't affect anything. And scroll through here, obviously now we have a nice lens flare. So what we can do here is also animate the flare brightness so it has a nice flicker to it. So alt click the stopwatch for flare brightness. Type in wiggle, open parenthesis, 0.5, comma, 20, close parenthesis. So, so the first number in expression deals with how fast it's going to flicker. And the second number it has to deal with how, uh, the amount. So we come here, it's going to be a nice slow flicker. You're probably not going to notice it compared to, say if we just did this at 2. You can see that there's going to be more of a parent flicker to it a little bit quicker. So we'll keep it at 2, comma, 20. And I'll zoom in real quick so you can see that on YouTube. So wiggle, open parenthesis, 2, comma, 20, close parenthesis. All right. So now I think we're looking pretty good. Obviously, we don't want the flare to be here when the animation starts. So hit the and keyboard for opacity. Add a keyframe for it. Move it forward just by a couple of frames. Lower the opacity to 0% and go to the end of the animation. So right here, add another keyframe and at 3 seconds. Close it down to 0%. And before we start duplicating this, one last thing I want to do is I want to take the last keyframe on the null object position, hit F9 on the keyboard to make that an easy ease keyframe, and do that for the start as well for the stroke effect to make that an easy ease keyframe as well by making that an F9 easy ease. And I'll just slow it down towards the end instead of coming to an abrupt stop. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start duplicating this onto the other letters. So what we want to do is just grab the flare layer and go to edit, duplicate. So we just have that. And then go up to layer, new, null object. So create a new object. Don't uh, duplicate the null object as uh, you'll have to reparent things. And it gets a little bit more messy. But make sure to keep those layers on top of everything. And then what we can do is go back to do the outline layer copy the mass path go to the first key or first frame of your timeline go to hit p on your keyboard and paste it into the position parameter and make sure you drag the last keyframe out to three seconds here and you might need to time reverse the keyframe depending on how what depending on what parameter you used and wait the last keyframe in the easy ease keyframe now all we have to do is go back to the flare center all click that and pick whip it to the position of the null object so basically from here we are just duplicating things and repeating the process until we're finished here and of course you can go into the duplicated flare and you can always change the color depending on you know what you want to do what colors you want to you know mess with all about the palette so we'll do pink there so i'm going to be right back while we duplicate this so as you're duplicating your lens flares you're going to need to probably move over the mask that you created if you decided to customize the lens flares so make sure to hit M on your keyboard, select the mask path, and you can just select your mask and make sure to put that mask over the letter that you're working on. Because if you don't, if I move this over all the way, you can see that that last lens flare is not there. So make sure that the mask is over the letter that you are applying your lens flare to. And running through all this, obviously now we have all of our you know lens flares in here and it looks really cool when we did this without any plugins obviously i would still prefer using optical flares from video copilot or at least no light factory from red giant but uh, if you don't want to purchase that obviously the lens flare effects will work just fine just with a few limitations obviously we don't have the ultimate control over the customization and doesn't have as many parameters as those plugins do so that's really the only downside to do it this way but you can still get some amazing results and it just takes a little bit more work and creativity to make it look nice. Make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers. And I want to talk about one technique that I did in that tutorial about a year and a half ago. Is I did a little bit of 3D animation to it. So if you want to make this a 3D layer, go ahead and turn on 3D right here uh, for all your layers. Go up to layer, new camera, and click OK. And what we can do here is we can hit P on keyboard for position. And we can move this to like 5 seconds. And we can grab the camera tool at the top grab the orbit camera tool and you can orbit around this and maybe what we'll do is we'll select both these keyframes right click them and we'll reverse the keyframes here so now 
And for example, you can see that you can put the lens flares in 3D space, and this can look pretty cool. But other than that, it looks really good. I still would suggest using optical flares so you can definitely control some of the lens flare elements a little bit better. But it looks really nice, and you should be able to create some nice work with this effect. So, so I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to drop a like on it because it helps my videos out tremendously. And please be sure to subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos. And hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And always be creating.